Good day, folks. Greg Budd from Bud's Bates here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. In the ensuing episodes, we'll be taking you along while we design and handcraft timber lures and hopefully get out into the water to use them. I've designed lures for some of the big boys in the industry and I sell my lures worldwide. I'll do my best to show you some of the hacks I've learned along the way. Stay with us and experience the wonders of casting lures to bass, giant catfish, tigerfish in Zimbabwe, which I'm fortunate to call my home, and cross borders with us as we'll target the denizens of the deep all along the African coast in magical places such as Mozambique. Through it all, I'll share a bit of my daily life and business experience, which can be quite tough in Zimbabwe at times, as we take you along to run the daily gauntlet of survival. Subscribe and click the notifications button to stay with us. Good day guys, welcome back to the African Lure Craftsman and the fifth, fifth installment of the Garfish build. I've taken the process quite a long way since we last, since our last episode, um, for a reason, because it's just going to take too long, but I've left certain things uh, to show you the fundamentals of how to do it, and that's part of the, the wire construction and the wire build. So what we've got now is we've got our fish segmented, and we've got most of it together in a very, very nice configuration. It's not glued, so you'll see that it's a bit loose in places. When we do actually fix this together, it'll be very free and easy. But what I'll do straight away is I'll take this apart and I'm going to show you what sort of configuration I, I did. We did have a few comments from some of our subscribers. A uh, uh, young lad, uh, Kunz from, from Germany, I think, had uh, mentioned that the single wire build um, might have too much play in it. So I've had to think about that very, very carefully on what to do so that you don't get play and these don't turn and various things like that. And as you can see, as you can see, they are pretty, pretty rigid. Uh, when they're glued in, they will all be in place. So let's just take this apart <clears throat> and show you what we've done. So wh what I've done here is it's going to be quite hard to disassemble. I'd put it together for the sake of the video just to show you how it goes together. But I've actually slotted and recessed little crevices and nooks and crannies to make every wire just slot in and click into place virtually. It was a bit difficult, so it is a little bit harder to, to get out. But it does obviously come out like so. And there's the next wire. Now, all these points here, you'll see the upturns here. Those, when they go together, it fits perfectly. They'll be tied. And what I use to tie that is 40 pound braid and I can guarantee you because I've tested this method time and time again that if you secure that with 30 wraps of braid tie a few knots super glue it once it's then set into the epoxy or in my case the jack and jack jacaranda dust and super glue mix it's never going to come apart I've tested this method to 200 kilos <clears throat> it doesn't break and on top of that we've used our 1.6 millimeter TIG wire to do all the construction through here. So basically it's essentially in one piece that's tied that'll be set into an epoxy or into jack dust um, and it'll never come apart. It's going to be a bit of a cleanup operation once I glue it but there are little tricks we can use to actually get the glue in there and make sure we firmly set the, that wire in there. So let me just continue to get this apart here. There we go. You can hear the clicks. I'll go into that just now and again yeah there we go so what we've got is doesn't look like much and i'll tell you what i should have been a dental technician because that was very difficult you probably can't see it on camera but if you look at every angle on these things and i'm going to turn it slowly you'll find that the back straight is totally concentric or straight with the front ring and so on and so forth doesn't matter where all the other little bits and pieces go i've designed them in such a way that they'll they'll when bent they'll slot into a place that makes it easier to get into the wood slot and so on and so forth with the next one as you can see with that one i don't know if you can see that but everything pertaining to the back and the front and the bottom hook point is a hundred percent straight so that's what we've done there. The front, very easy. And you might be asking, why have I got these big long straights here? Kunz had mentioned that he had built a sand eel 
and he had had some difficulty. Now the method he used, which is what I was going to use, was going to be two rings like so, and they were going to be joined like that. Problem is, how do you avoid the play? How do you avoid each piece turning against each other like so? Now one thing is the recess and the V of the wood would help do it to a degree, but you need something else. So what I've done with each piece of this wood is I've made a recess in the tail end of the V here where the round circle will go into and will give its play. I've not only just cut that into the wood, I was also thinking about the integrity of the lure and how excessive play or a fish on this lure might cause these things to break. So what I did is I excavated, don't know if you can see that, this area here, just out of the wood, just around that, that recess there, and I filled it with jacaranda dust and super glue again, sanded it down, recut these holes, and now that's very, very strong in there. It's almost like a plastic, a very hard, high-impact polystyrene, you could say, in there. So those shouldn't break, and you'll have each of these joined, as you can see here. Uh, that one I haven't done because I was going to show you that one and how to do it with the same sort of recess. We're going to go on to our next bit, which is our partition 4, just to show you how we can do the recess and we're going to build the wire and try and continue this wire so we can see how we can finally get it to end. You'll see my hook points there are quite close together but they are far enough. I measured that with hooks and that was going to be a bit of a problem as well <coughs> which is why this is changing. We're changing with the times, we're kind of rolling with the punches and we're designing it as we go along because um, there are certain things like the fin aspects that were going to prevent me from putting them in other places. So I've already bent my circle and let's go into tooling for this. And the tooling I've used to get to these, these stages, these, these sections, if you remember we filed them very, very, uh, we cut them very rough. Um, if you have a close-up look on these, you'll see that I've actually sanded them all down. They are perfect angles now. Um, all perfectly aligned with the center slot. And how I've done that is a simple process of hard elbow work and needle files, guys. Best thing to use for this sort of thing because you've got flats on it. As long as you've got a flat on a triangular one or a flat file like that, you can get those sort of flats. And it's very easy to use filing like that and keeping that, those planes as level as possible. So that's how we've done that. We're going to go to our next stage, as I say, now. And let's just lay out what we've got here so far. As I say, very technical build. And I must say, this is probably the most technical swim bait I've ever built. Having just gone through the weekend and uh, <coughs> experienced um, the, the wire forming which I did and that was I must say quite a mission but it's, it's, it just shows that everything's possible and um, again there's much simpler ways to do this but we want the integrity we want this to be able to catch a 40 50 kg GT or a tuna or a mackerel or anything like that so this is why we're doing it that way so let's go into our next section here so our next section using this wire here sorry the smaller one needs to fit onto that part of the wire there and needs to sit basically aligned to the straight of the wire there. So what I will do for the sake of this is I'll remove this. I'll slot it into the section it was designed for. And just quickly here, you'll see here how I've recessed the front as well. I've done that so I can seat the wire in there and then just slot it into the, 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 the recesses there. And you've got your wire perfectly formed, perfectly central, and all in place like that. Your back wire here, you can see it's showing through there. I'm going to have to do that, straighten that a little bit. And then we're going to fit this other wire in a recess over here. So let's get on with that. I'll just straighten this first. Click it out of place. Just give that a little bit of a tweak here. I'm holding it there so I don't deform the, the hook point. And again, I've, that's raised. If you notice, when I pull that together, it actually moves a little bit anyway. 
and we'll get that wire there. So let's slot it back in again. We're just trying to get that right, as I say. A lot of playing around with this, fellas. So you just got to play around with it until you get it right. Click it in. Looks straight to me. Our wire is okay there. Our alignment is okay. And how I'll do that is I'll just mark that with a pencil. And that's basically where my slot is going to go. Right there. Now, <clears throat> how do we make that slot? The Dremel we showed you last week, or the Maturk, I've actually come to really like this thing. The battery does last a bit longer than I thought it would. Um, and it's actually become very handy to do a lot of this work. This thing, though, is the first cordless I've had. <clears throat> and it's fantastic not having the encumbrance of a cord. And you can just use it as freely as you as you like without the cord there. Before I go on with that, that's just a little cutting bit there, which we're going to use to cut the recess in the back of the, the, the partitions here. Um, but I'm just going to go into something else quickly and back to the wire here. So nothing comes without careful planning. And that's something I want to say to you guys here is draw things out on paper. So if you can see this piece of paper here, it's not exact, but that's where I started planning this wire and exactly what's going to happen. A few things have changed since I actually even did the drawing, <clears throat> but that's all part of the process. Um, sorry, that one goes on there as well. That's all part of the process that things will change. As you can see, I had my points in different places, but it's all part of the process is draw it out first, get the rough idea of what you want to do, and then go into your production of your wire form or whatever you are designing at the time. So that's how I've come to that. It's going to change again. One of the things I was thinking about is putting a third hook point on the tail. I'm no longer going to do that. Um, I think it's just going to be too much of a technical process. And also, it's going to be a little flaw in the integrity of the lure. So we're going to leave it at that and just continue the other sections. I think two hooks with the right size hooks are going to be perfect for this. So that's how we're going to do it now. And who knows? Maybe next week you'll see another change. I might have changed my mind again, but hopefully not. Anyway, but that's, I think, fundamental in any lure design is don't have anything set in stone. Plan it out on paper. Be willing to accept change and be willing to accept that some things just aren't going to work. And I've learned that again through this build. Anyway, let's go back to what we were doing. And that is recessing our uh, tail ends of these so we can get our wire form we might mess up guys and remembering and it's just such a, a another fundamental thing is remember there's always jacaranda dust and super glue it's just the best thing ever to fix mess ups i find that all the time and we're constantly making them i mean i don't think anyone can do things absolutely perfect the first time but uh, if you mess it up and the position's wrong, you can fill it in again and you can go again. And if anything, it just adds integrity to that section there where you might get a bit of twist on the wire and you don't want those little bits of wood falling off or chipping off. So let's go with this. There's the tool. Let's get it on. Not too high because we don't want to overdo it. We want it to be quite forgiving if we make a mistake. Align it. Make sure your alignment is right from the top as well. It's looking okay. And that should do it. Just this side a little bit more. Make them even. Yep, that should do it. Let's turn that off. Oh, wow, that sawdust went right up my nose. Ah. Anyway, so guys, what we've done here is we've cut that recess using the little cutting bit in the Dremel. And we've made it just wider than the wire. You'll see what I'm, I'm doing here is that fits in perfectly in there. We've got plenty of movement. And what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow for any or much sideward play or up and down play, should I say. So that's the reasoning behind that. We will seal that again. We'll go through all that process. I've already done it on the other ones and we'll get that so it's quite solid. As I say, this material here 
is more at the moment jacaranda dust and super glue than it is wood. The wood is mainly on the outsides here, and I've just cut out this into this here. Let me draw it for you guys just so you you know what I mean here. Drawing like this is a bit of a hassle. So basically that section there, if you can see me drawing upside down, has been reinforced with jacaranda dust and super glue so that you're not going to get chips out of the, these areas here. So anyway, that's where we are with that one. Let's try and fit this all together again and see where we are with the wire. Let's fit that in there. Yeah. And as you can see, it's a very, very, very good fit there. And you've got the wire. Now, you might say that's not central, but I mean, there's ways to doing matchsticks or a, or a lure builder's best friend. The other thing are little pieces of wood like tongue depressors. Um, but anyway, so we'll, we'll get to that, is with the, um, the gluing of the wires in, we'll set these in place with little pieces of matchstick, various things like that, and we'll get them perfectly central. Just for now, though, we just want to see how our fit is, and let's click that out again. Let's get this on here. Go back inside. Yeah, as I say, a little bit difficult. Got to have this at the top here. But hey, this is this is the challenge, is when I have to glue this thing together. Wow. So now we've got it in. We've got that in place. Okay, and what we can tell is there's a little bit of resistance there. So I'd have to go and do that a little bit more. It's okay. And remember, the wire was a little bit bent. So we're going to straighten that up now. And we're going to widen that slot a little bit more before we finally seal it. And... That there, we'd have to check as well. The alignment, perfect. So with the current slot, it should be good to go. If we do glue this and we get alignment slightly out, remember we can always take a bit of sandpaper to the top or the bottom or wherever, and we can even it out. So I'm not too worried about that at this stage. So anyway, let's go back to what we're doing. Get that little section out of there. Pull this out of here, which is going to be almost as hard taking it out as it was getting it in. But that's part of that. There we go. Not as hard. Um, so firstly, I'll straighten this. And I want to get that perfectly straight. I don't know how other lure builders do it. But I use my pliers a lot to get things straight. And I'll always hold them at an angle, hold it firmly in there. And I'll align things with the pliers. It's very good on, on, on any wire, actually. So I'm just going to pick up another wire here. This was one that I'd messed up quite badly. Um, but to, to get alignment, very easy to see that line there and to straighten things up. So I'm always using pliers like that, uh, even with these, to get alignment there. You can do it like that. So yeah, very easy to use pliers. You get an eye for it and it becomes quite easy. So let's just go and straighten that up a bit. That actually looks, we're nearly there on that one. But what I'll do here is I'll get another pair. And I'm just going to give this a tweak that way. And then that way there. And I think... We have that perfect, okay. Next thing, let's go back to that and we're gonna widen it a little bit. On both sides, guys, you don't wanna now upset the, uh, the alignment of the, the swim bait and that's fine. I'm gonna make it a little bit deeper on this side. It looks a bit shallower. That's fine there. Okay, let's just check with our wire. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. So, guys, fitting is the key thing here. Just play with it a lot. You'll get. You'll have to go back and forward with the um, the wire configuration time and again. Make sure everything slots in because when it comes to the final gluing. If it doesn't, there's going to be a bigger problem than there really will be, which is going to be obviously getting everything fitted. Um, and here we go again. We know it went together once before, so we know it does go together. I've just got to remember how. 
Uh, and it's not like that. It was like, uh, like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, drag that sideways through there. Okay. Slot it into place. And uh, there we go. Sorry, guys. There we go. And yeah, there we have it a lot better. So that's basically, and if I, of course, straighten it up, it's even better again. So there we go. Yeah. So that's exactly what we're trying to do there. Sorry, there's Ralphie. He's a lot better, by the way, guys. He went to the vet this morning. He had another jab. I can't remember the name of the, the drug they injected into him, but it does uh, ease his pain quite considerably for the day. And then he's on a whole lot of other uh, painkillers as well, which unfortunately have to be for the rest of his life. Anyway, but yeah, there we go, guys. I hope that's showed you how we can do this. And now we can get on with bending the, the, the wire configuration for the next section of the lure. So we've cut our slot in the back of our, our section here. Got a nice free working wire there. Very, very, very strong. I think it's going to be particularly once that's all set in there. What we're going to do now quickly is we're going to form this section of the wire, which is for the the last section minus the tailpiece of our integral through wire system here. So let's take this apart again. So let's get that off there. We'll put that back where it belongs. So what do we want to do here? Okay, firstly, let's maybe talk you through what we need to do. We have to have that set in sideways. And we have to have, again, a, a kind of like a V section at the back here. So it presents a, a flat wire down that edge there. So that our tail piece, which is a thinner wire, and that's it right there, can hook into that V piece in a similar fashion. So down the inner edge, should I say. And then that'll have a slot as well. This tail wire, and I've said it before in a previous video, will just be drilled and set into the tail. We've got nothing on the tail other than the tail itself that is too important. Should we lose it, it's going to cause a dilemma. It won't at all. Um, I, as I say, I was going to put another hook point there, but it's just too small a piece and too technical a build. So I think we'll just dig that in there with the tail on there and we should be good to go. Okay, so let's start forming this. Firstly, what I need is I need the slot to accommodate the V bend. So I'm going to take out this section here. Guys, simple. If you haven't got the tools at home, which I often haven't at my immediate disposal, just use what you've got. And I use a wood saw here. Easy way to do it. Just be careful. Just hold the wood saw there. And hold the angle right and cut. Perfect. So we started off our cut there just holding the saw. Um, if you practical though, which I'm not often practical, we'll put in a vise and we'll just finish the cut there. Um, so let's just go there. We'll go to the vise. We'll get the angle correct in here. We don't want to pinch it too hard because we might snap it and we'll very gently and you can see a lot more okay we're getting there okay and the rest of that i'm going to actually just finish off with a needle flat file and get all those angles right. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we've just looking at the angle from the top of the V, going in and at an angle to accommodate the, the angle of the wire. So let's finish this off. Okay guys, let's go for our wire bend. The other quick thing you've got to know is we've got the, in order to get the, the 
sections as close proximity as possible. I'm also recessing the front face here in a way that accepts quite easily the round wire joining bit there. The wire there is, is uh, it's one wire on top of the other and we've just adjusted the angles there so we're presenting a very very flat round outer edge of the circle there. So I'm going to put a recess in the top of the V here, one lower and one higher to accommodate the wire. Uh, we just got to check which way we want that to go again. Um, so we want that okay we want that lower on the bottom so again let me just do that quickly and very easy higher here Don't want to take off too much, and we can make the, the final adjustments with a, a round needle file. Let's just see how we're going with that now. See, it's already nearly there. A little bit more. Let's go with the needle file. So, I'm sure you can see that. Probably looks a little bit squonk, but it's supposed to be. Um, and... If we get that in there now, there we go. That will be almost perfect. I just have to make a few adjustments there. If we look from the top here, or the bottom, you'll see how that's dead center in the middle. Any micro adjustments I'll make later when I glue it in. And that's exactly what we want there. So now what we've got our place there and how far this is going to be set in, what we can do is we can get an estimation of where we want the bend in our wire internally and I can only do this one way I can do it by eye because there's nothing I can get in there no pen or anything to actually mark that I could try with a scalpel that might be an idea just try and get a mark on the wire by pushing that in there and I can see where that U is but I don't think we're going to get much on there to be honest nope so I know where that is I'm going to put my finger exactly where it is and now what we want to do is do a bend from that place there twist it the right way straight like so that's all we want to do there let's just check that again The beauty about this, guys, is if you make a mess, guess what you do? You just adjust either the wood or the wire. In this case, it's probably easier to adjust the wire. You can see I've done it too prematurely, the bend. It should have been a little bit further down the wire. But all we do is we pick up our file, if we can find it, and we just take that ridge off there. And carry on checking it until you've got it perfect. Okay, that's almost perfect there. Bearing in mind, that's also crooked because we've we've bent the wire like that. We can straighten that up. That's not a problem. So that's actually fitting in flat, the bottom wire. I can now see exactly where I want my next bend. And to do that, I will grab a little CD marker. And I'll mark the position on the wire. And take it out again. Let's just, while we add it, straighten things up. Okay, so that's there. That's fine. Okay, and right on that mark. We want to bend that. I'm going to go a bit lower than the mark from experience. I know that because the bend will take up a bit of room and kind of make this jut out a little bit more. So let's go there, I think. There. That's flat. And that's pretty much it. Let's check that again. Okay, that's...
that's going to be a bit of a problem getting that in there. So let me just do this. What I'm going to do very quickly now is cut this extra bit off here. Remembering guys, there's no integrity, there's no 50 kilo fish hanging off this bit. So we are going to tie it, but it doesn't have to be turned up points or anything like that. So I'm just going to cut that off straight away over here so it doesn't get in the way. Just bend it out a bit. There we go. Get that together again. Right now that'll do for what we want to do. Pick up our piece again. Get that in there. Oh, going the wrong way again. Geez, guys, going a little bit crazy here. Okay, get that up there. Click that into place. Okay, so we are a little bit short on that bend. We could adjust that two ways. We could recess that a little bit more, make this a tighter fitting tail, or we could rebend the wire. What I'm going to do is a little bit of both, I think. I just want to say something here as well, guys. Is We've talked before in our previous episode about the angles on the faces of your partition so what I've done and I, I, I neglected to go into that earlier is I have that's the wrong bit I have made the angle on the face of each partition a greater angle than the angle on the inner and why why I've done that is it gives you more play obviously than if the angle were the same angle, which means it would be up here, and you wouldn't have as much play in each partition. I'm making these as tight as possible because we've got six parts here. And if I actually put these all together on the wire and I actually bent them, I mean, you're already on that one, you'll see how far that can go. You'll almost get a full circle. Not quite a full circle, but I think you get what I mean. So you don't really need... A big long elaborate connection there and more play this will still and I can guarantee you sw swim very very well uh, we've got a lot of of uh, movement in with that so I've got my dog walking around my leg here and bumping into me got a lot of movement with that and as you ex uh, accentuate it down the length of the the swim bait you're going to have, as I say, almost a full 180 degrees. So that's plenty of movement for that. So I just wanted to say that. But anyway, let's get this adjustment made. I've actually got that in there perfectly now. As you'll see, that's quite rigid on there. It's clicking into place. You'll see that the alignment of the, the ring is perfect. It's central. And that, of course, when we stick it in, will straighten it up. Looks a little bit skew there as well, but is in exactly the right position. What I'm going to do now quickly is just finish this wire off, just so we don't keep you too long, and we'll take it on from there. So I formed the wire for the last section, or the section before the tail end here, and I've got it all fitting nicely. I'll show you how that fits in there. If you can see from the back end, obviously everything will straighten up when it's glued. And the front end here, we're in, need to just straighten that up a little bit. Um, that's basically what it looks like there. And that goes onto this section here and will all fit together. Which means that the last piece we have to do is the tail. And that's the little wire section for the tail, which will go onto here. and the tail will be attached there. So I think what we're going to do to end this episode is drill the final hole in the tail, get everything pieced together to show you what it's going to look like. And I think finally, um, we'll just lay the, the swim bait out to see what sort of uh, angles we can get on it. And uh, then talk a little bit about what we'll go into next episode. And there's a long way to go on this, Lou, I must tell you. I'm going to make a little flat spot here on the table to accept the, the drill bit. I'll just use the same tool. That's fine. Okay, they'll put it in as far as it can go just so we don't get 
a lot of movement. Um, see how that is. Okay, and let's hopefully not drill our fingers, which I've done many times, mind you. Let's get a little indentation in there. It's fine. Perfect. Alignment looks okay. It's fine. Perfect guys, so there we have it. That's where that'll go. And we will just set that in there again with our jack dust and our super glue. I won't do it immediately. We'll do that uh, the whole prep and glue. In fact, what I will do in the next episode is I'll glue some of it together and leave one or two pieces so I can show you guys how to do it. Um, but for the time being, let's get this all wired together, see how it fits. All the wires are together. They are not tied yet. We don't need to do that just yet. It is a bit of a task getting everything into place and in the right position using what tools I have. There we go. Get that down there. Get that down there. There we go. So that's in. Go on to the next part. bit of a challenge but hey okay that's the next bit clicking in nice let's go to the next bit get that up there first get that in there and then this is the difficult one I remember and again I'm going to struggle to remember exactly how I did this but you know what the good thing is we know it's been done once so it's going to go together again so I think I pushed it in there first then I got this in there then I took this in here and there we go so that all fits nicely like playing with Lego this it's quite fun anyway uh, I'd, I hope I put that one on right, um, because there was a right and a wrong way. Uh, we might have to just play around with that, but I think we'll get the gist of exactly what we're trying to do here. And I hope I put that one in right. That's, uh, sorry, wrong place. Come on, you go in there. You go in there. There we go. Click that in. Doesn't seem to be clicking in exactly. Why is that out of alignment? Oh, there we go. Okay. But that means that's a bit tight. But these are the things, and this is why we do this constantly, so we can get everything exactly right before we start putting glue. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment there, guys. I'm going to leave that for now just to show you the, the basic idea. We've got one out of place. It's not because it's been been fitted out of place. I just can't get that and that aligned, which is quite easy to fix. We'll do that at some point. Ah, uh, wait. Let's get this guy on here. Get that on there. I haven't cut my slot in the back there yet. Um, and then that will go on there. So let me try and set that into place here. There we go. So guys, there's your basic configuration I can feel that joint there is a bit stiff all the rest are okay I'll play around with that um, there's the basics when we finished we're gonna have a tail on here sitting about there we're gonna have a dorsal on here sorry sitting about there an anal fin about there the two side fins over here and what we'll do as well is we'll finish up the cosmetics on the face and the beak and everything else. So guys, I think you can see it's, it's taking shape. Let me just show you one more thing. I hope it doesn't fall apart because as you, as you know, it's not quite set in place there. That goes there. As I'll just show you, maybe on the back would be better. With the various, and that's the stiff one there, but it doesn't matter. And that, I haven't drilled the slot. So that'll end up probably being about there. But I'll just show you what sort of bend you get in that. And that 
in itself is plenty for a fantastic action. This is almost coming around more past your, your 180 degrees. So it's going to be a fantastic action. And you just think about that in terms of that on the other side and the sway and the, the, the action we'll get with that. I think it'll be fantastic. There's our garfish swim bait. Kind of mostly together. Kind of like a Meccano set at the moment. We've got a nice, nice action there. We're going to have a nice sound to that as well, I think. Um, what we're going to do is end this episode now. We hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you, if you have, please click like and subscribe. What we're going to be going into next episode is the cosmetic finish of the actual lure. So as I said before, it's going to be uh, gluing these fins on here and actually showing you, sorry, that's the wrong way around, how to flare them out so we get a nice panicked fleeing look on this, this uh, bait fish. We're going to finish the beak here and that's going to be just using files to sand that down, get a little bit of a recess in the mouth there so we can get a sharp point there. Won't affect action too much uh, at all. And then finally after that we're going to go into the detailing of the the tail and the other fins and for that I'll be using little dental bits and I'll actually be sculpting them and getting all the fin rays in there and everything and then smoothing them down with a thousand grits so that once they're clear coated they'll still be very clear um, and we'll be cutting the slots and fitting those so a lot of work as I said uh, before to, to do on this bait but it is coming together nicely um, and I think it's going to be quite an exciting build stay tuned